Hello, family. I'm gonna try to make some port wine cheese, lemon cheesecake panna cotta with a blackberry coulis. The panna cotta is gonna be made with coconut cream. I'm just here for moral support. Here I am. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I have a little bit of warm water in here and I'm gonna take some unflavored gelatin, a tablespoon, or a little bit more than a tablespoon because I I've got a tablespoon of this I'm sprinkling on the warm water to bloom it. We're going to use about two-thirds coconut milk and one-third cream. Luckily, I can edit some of this out. There you okay. go. Two cups. Two cups. A little bit less than a fourth heavy cream. We've got some port wine cheese that I'm going to put in here some of this lemonade, powdered lemonade drink mix. I'm gonna put this on the stove and warm it until just before it boils. We don't want it to boil. All right, one thing I forgot before I left was that I was supposed to put um, sugar in here. So I'm using allulose, which is a monosaccharide, and it's my favorite choice for a keto sweetener. I'm gonna put in a teaspoon of vanilla into this mixture. Mix it up and pour this really hot stuff into this bloomed gelatin. And then I'm supposed to stir. I shall stir. Bye. <laughs> All right, Grandma's done stirring this stuff together. Okay. Grandma's gonna clean up the inside and the outside and I'm gonna start making some blackberry coulis. Can you do that, Mom? I have a little bit of water in here and I'm gonna put in the blackberries. And it's not a whole lot of blackberries, so I'm not gonna use a whole lot of sugar in here. A little bit less than a third of a cup. And we're just gonna cook that. We put the panna cottas in the refrigerator. They have to sit for about four hours. We, we need to stir this and kind of pulverize this and just boil it until um, all this goes together. I thinned it enough so that I'm pretty sure it's like a jam instead of a coulis. But we're gonna put it through in this handy dandy thing that grandma brought me because I do not have one of these. And get rid of the seeds because blackberry seeds are big and nasty. They're a lot worse than raspberry seeds. They are. So we're gonna take, yeah, take this and just push Mushu. until all the stuff comes through except for the seeds. All right, I think I told you I put the panna cotta in the refrigerator, but I'm going to tell you again. It's in the refrigerator and it's supposed to set for about four hours. This stuff is going to go on top. Hi, family. How are you? So what we have left to do is put this blackberry stuff on this stuff in the glasses, which is supposedly like a cheesecake panna cotta. Peter Wang. You're gonna get Ruben's hair in the yeah. port wine, cheesecake, lemon, panna cotta with a blackberry coulis. You guys want to try one? Mm. Panna cotta means cooked cream. Shh, <laughs> don't don't be awful with it. Bad. It's delicious. They don't want to be on camera. Unless Ruben's mm. there. That's good. Everybody, Grandma came over today and she's gonna try it. Okay, I'm sure. It's good. Ooh, well, it's, it's jelly y. It's tasty. It's good. It's sweet. It's um, pretty dense. It is. More than what uh, a jello or something would be. Yeah, I think be. maybe less. I went by what a recommendation. Um, I think maybe I would put in less gelatin than that recommendation was for the four cups of liquid that we used. Right. Because yeah. I think a panna cotta is supposed to be a little looser than this. But I think it tastes good. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, the work that went into it should taste good. Because Pete thought it tasted like puke. 
But, you know, <laughs> I liked it. And yay, Grandma likes it. So maybe mm -hmm. I'll put this video together for y'all. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So I'm going to begin the making of a fennel salad right now. And I'm making some of the dressing by taking some more blackberries. I'm not adding sugar. I'm just doing berries and water. And I want this to be the acid for a dressing or one of the dressings I put on this fennel salad. I'm not sure if I want the whole salad to be purple right now. So I'm going to experiment with it a little. I'm going to now take the blackberry sauce that I made, added to it some of the lemon Kool-Aid packet because it needed some more sour and um, I was looking for some citrus. Maybe I need a bigger bowl. Huh? I'm going to put this in the fine batch sieve and I'm just going to squish it until all the juice comes out. The last stuff that I made with the allulose in it, I cooked for longer and it got very thick and almost jammy. This I'm leaving thinner and more runny because I want to, I want a different consistency for this. So I have some very nice blackberry sauce here. Now I'm going to take this fennel. He was hard to find. At festival there wasn't any fennel in the regular spot, um, but I did find some little fennel fronds which we took and tucked into like a, scall a scallion bag because I thought that might be all the fennel I could find. But then I'm like, oh, they have a small organic section. And look what I found. Makes me happy. It's almost like horns. I'm going to make a shaved fennel salad with at least the bulb of this. And I'm going to include some of the fronds. I don't know if you can eat the stems. But right now I just took the top off. I'm going to save these. Separate, separate the little um, beautiful little green crowns later. And I am going to shave this with a mandolin. The night before, I put four chicken breasts into a slow cooker, covered it with Montreal chicken seasoning and some umami seasoning, two blocks of cream cheese, some grated cheddar, and then when it was done, I sprinkled on Cholula hot sauce. And I used that for the stuffing. So, the fennel is all done and in a bowl. So I've got these beautiful peppers cut. I left the stems on for effect and I rubbed them with some olive oil on the inside. I'm going to take the shredded chicken filling that I made yesterday and put it in each pepper. I have chopped up some of the fronds in the fennel salad and I'm going to make a dressing for it. I decided not to put the blackberries in it. I did kind of a little a test run with some and the blackberries got lost. So I'm going to leave it as something I can dot around because the flavor with the fennel is amazing. But, um, but yeah, we're not going to make a pink fennel salad. So I'm taking some good extra virgin olive oil. I wish I had fresh thyme. If I had fresh thyme, I would definitely be putting it in here. For my test run, I tried some ground thyme and that just made it gritty, so we're not gonna go for thyme. Because thyme is good with anise stuff. Um, some apple cider vinegar. And just a little salt. And a little pepper. And see if I can get it to someone to emulsify here in my bowl. And I'm going to pour this on there and toss it. But right now it's just pretty basic. And I think what's going to bring it up is the blackberries. I baked these for about 20 minutes. I want them to bake for another 10 minutes. But um, I want the cheese on for the last 10 minutes. That's what I decided between the last time we talked and now. So I microwaved up some of the port wine cheese spread and there it is in all its pinky orange glory and I'm gonna top this with some of that. I'm gonna put this back in the oven for another 10 minutes. All right here we have it. I just showed it to some of you on a chat but I've got a stuffed let's call it poblano pepper with some um, Port wine cheese on the top, stuffed with a spicy shredded chicken. And I've got the fennel salad 
and then a nice frond on top and a blackberry, and I've got it all sitting on some of the blackberry concentrate that I made, which adds a really nice sweet note to the dressing without actually making the salad pink. It looks really good. Let's try this. That is flipping amazing. The salad's amazing. And this is going to be really good too, unless the port wine cheese bread has ruined everything. Mm. I would not be unhappy if I had gotten that at a restaurant. Mom, signing out.